going to be doing is looking through each question in this module test um, that you had the other day. And we're going to go through the paper and, um, and we're going to talk about the concepts in there and the things to watch out for and what you should be doing when you're doing these questions. So whenever you get a test back, you want to be thinking and analysing, how did I go on this test? Did I not do very well because of the fact I didn't study very well? Did I not do very well because I was confused by some of the terminology? Was the way that the question was framed, did that confuse me? So going through and analysing how you did in each question, and specifically those that you got wrong, why you got them wrong, and what you can do to improve for next time. In fact, what I recommend is every question that you got wrong, you need to go through and do it again, underline the key terms, and then go and find similar questions, so then you can test yourself um, to see how you go with those ones. So anyway, let's go with question number one. As you can see, already see here, I've already highlighted a few things from um, a test video that I made. And you can see here that it says a satellite is in orbit around Earth with a tangential velocity. So I've highlighted tangential velocity. You need to know what that is, obviously. Then they show you a picture here. And you can see why they just changed the bins over there, of course, while I'm recording. Um, that the velocity is at a tangent to the motion of the satellite. And so the, the satellite's going in circular motion. Um, and the tangential velocity is this one here. Okay, um, now it says which of the following describes the, the direction of the centripetal force? Well, remember, centripetal means center seeking. So, just by pure definition, it's going into the center of the circle. Okay, remember that the centripetal force is being provided, is the net force by the gravitational force of the planet. So, in other words, we can say that Fc is equal to Fg. So A is the correct response here that the centripetal force is going in the same direction as the gravitational force. Opposite direction to the gravitational force? No, that means that it would be going that way, which means it would be going in, in a circle in that direction, not happening. Same di direction as the tangential velocity? No, because that means it wouldn't, if it was going in the same direction, this satellite would be going off in a straight line. It wouldn't be curving around. Some force, according to Newton's first law, has to be occurring on this because it's an unbalanced external force. It's causing an acceleration, that is, a change in direction of this satellite. So A is the best response there. All right, let's move on to question two. All right, let's do question two. And you can see here with question two, it says a satellite in circular orbit at a distance r from the center of the Earth has an orbital velocity. So let's just highlight orbital velocity. You need to know what that is. If the distance was increased to 2r, so let's highlight distance, and it's been increased to 2r, what will be the satellite's orbital velocity? So they're the key terms there in this question. So first of all, to get, okay, orbital velocity. Well, orbital velocity is equal to the square root of g cap bm over r. Okay, so if it says here, um, if we increase the distance to 2r, well, if we look at the equation here, that the velocity is proportional to 1, that's 1 over r. If we make these two equal to 1, right, because we don't want to look at the relationship for r here. So let's do velocity is over the square root of 1 over r. And of course, that's the same as going root 1 divided by root r. Well, root 1 is 1 over root r. Okay, and if we're going to now double the actual radius from r to 2r, let's do that, 1 over root 2, and that turns out to be 0 0.7. And so it's 0 0.7v, which is the correct response here, b. Okay, so this question here was, first of all, testing, do you know what, what um, um, orbital velocity is? Second, do you know the equation? Okay, um, and if you don't know the equation, then you can derive it. Okay, and then what happens if you look at the relationship between velocity and r when you double r? Okay, so we made the numerator equal to 1. The one that we're looking at here is r, and so therefore we substitute 2 into there, and uh, that's how you do that one. All right, see you in question 3. All right, question 3 here. A motorcycle travels around a vertical circular path with a radius of 3.6 meters at constant speed. So it's undergoing uniform circular motion. The combined mass of the rider and the motorcycle is 200 kilograms. What is the minimum speed right, at which the motorcycle must travel to maintain their circular path? 
Well, let's look at the forces involved here. Um, okay, so if it's a constant speed, it's not accelerating, and according, according to Newton's first law, then the object in motion stays in motion. So it's going to be continuing in a forward motion here um, at a constant speed. The only thing that's causing it to go into a circular path here is going to be the central pedal force. And so we have central pedal force there, and that's in the same direction as gravity, Fg, up at the top there. So if we say that Fg is equal to Fc, then Fg is mg and then mv squared on r. The m's cancel. The question says, um, what is the minimum speed? So we want to, of course, make velocity of the subject. So we times r over to there, make v squared equal to rg, and then we take the square root of that to find what v is, and then we put in our values. And that turned out to be 5.94 meters per second. Oh, look at that, it's underneath the picture there. Let's move this across. Okay, so that's how you do that one, and 5.94 is C. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, with this one here, let's look at the diagram. We've got a cricketer here. He hits a ball. They both go to the same height, but the second shot, Q, goes further than P. So it says that both balls reach the same maximum height. So you're thinking to yourself, what does the same maximum height mean? Well, remember that the time of flight is dictated by the change in Y value, okay? It doesn't matter whether you've got horizontal motion or whether you've got, um, you're just dropping it from rest, right? If they're both starting from rest. Um, the one that you just dropped from the maximum will travel in the same time because it's traveling from the same height than the one that's being shot out with an X component there. So when you say same maximum height, therefore same time of flight. Then it says Q travels twice as far. Well, if they've got the same time of flight, then that means that to travel further, it has to have a different X component, right? So let's have a look at here. We've got our change in X is UX times T. We know that T is the same. So um, we could, if we wanted to, um, rearrange this to find out what that is, if that was what the question was asking. But here is just a qualitative description here. So it says time of flight. Well, no, because we just said that that's the same time of flight. What's different? Well, it's the same time of flight. Initial velocity. Well, if they've got the same um, y value up here, it means they're going to have the same component in the y direction because they both have the same, reach the same height. But the x component is going to be different. Okay, so the different x component of the launch velocity is going to be different, which means that their initial velocity is going to be different. So that's b. Gravitational force um, is constant, and so is gravitation acceleration. So that's that one. Let's move on to five. All right, here we go with number five. A projectile was launched from the ground. It had a range of 70 meters. So this is highlight range, 70 meters. And it was in the air for 3.5 seconds. So that's time of flight. All right, so let's just put that there. Time is 3.5 seconds. And the range, change in x value, is 70 meters. Okay. What is the angle? to the horizontal that was from launch. Well, when you're talking about an angle, straight away you're probably thinking, okay, let's talk about tan, right? Because if we look at something like that, and there's our projectile, it's the angle here we want, and we're thinking of opposite divided by adjacent, which is tan. So here we've got Vy, and here we've got Vx. So we need to find those two. Once we've found those two, we can apply the tan function and then we can find the angle. All right, so let's just talk about that. This one over here, let's see what we can find out here. We've got change in x and we've got time. So we know that change in x is equal to the velocity in the x direction times t. So we can find out the initial x velocity divided by t. And if we take that 70 meters divided by 3.5 seconds, 
you end up with 20 meters per second. So that's the X component, so let's just write that there. Right, so we've got that one. Now we need to find the Y component. Well, if we think about our equation like this, change in Y is UYT plus a half GT squared. Right, because that's the acceleration in the Y direction. Well, if we think about it like this, we're starting from, and I'll try and draw it here, we're starting from ground there, going up, and then coming down. And that's in a time of 3.5 seconds, remember. So the change in the Y is actually zero. We started there, gone up to maximum, and come back down. The change in Y is zero. Okay. Well, we don't know UY, but we do know the time of flight, 3.5 seconds. And put in our G value and 3.5 seconds squared. That means the only unknown here is U, um, Y. So chuck that in your calculator and you get 17.15 meters per second. So now we've got both of those. And there's the bell. So we've got, let's do it up here. So therefore, tan theta is equal to Vy, which is opposite, and Vy was 17.15, divided by adjacent, which is Uy, which is 20. Therefore, theta is equal to the inverse tan of that. And when you put that into calculator, you get 40.6. Well, 40.6 is pretty close to 40, so there's your answer. Okay, and we'll see you in the next question.